So talking more about the research, one of the things that's very exciting is that we've been able to do functional magnetic resonance imagery. So it's an examination of the brain that is often done, uh, but then it can be used in research as well. And it's like a brain scan, I think they call it. It doesn't have any radiation to it. It's, it's done by a magnetism, actually. But you can have people in the scanner do something. And when you have them do something, you can watch what their brains are doing. Uh, not, you could watch it as it was happening, but mainly you take these photographs and then you catch them, you catch very small moments in time and it can be a very fine look at the brain. And so then we can compare people while they're doing one thing versus another. We can also compare people doing the same thing to see whether there are any individual differences in how they do something. And we've done a couple studies of this now with sensitive people, comparing them to non-sensitive people. And it's a pretty expensive thing to do, so we only will run like 10 of each. And yet we get very clear differences between sensitive and non-sensitive people and how they're using their brain, and in particular, how they're processing their perceptions, and in particular, that they're processing, that the processing is, is substantially different in the higher levels of processing, not again just the eyes or ears, but the difference is happening in the way they're using the information. And I'll give you two examples. One is a study in which um, one of our graduate students used um, photos that were just slightly different so, so a photo of a house with a fence and there's two fence posts and then the other picture has three fence posts, exactly the same picture but you know they photoshopped out one of the fence posts, another one of a row of hay, a rolls of hay and there's one more or less hay in, in the roll. So it's pretty hard to see and they presented them either quickly or slowly and they found that sensitive people worked harder on the, uh, their brains were more active on the subtle ones. In fact, we kind of had the impression that maybe the nonsense of people just didn't even try. Maybe they just felt it was impossible. So they, they worked, um, uh, their brains were more active than sensitive people working on the more sensitive ones, uh, tasks, and also when the task was faster. So they were just generally able to and, um, and perhaps willing to, but definitely able to see subtleties that the other brains were not, were not processing. The other one which I think is just fascinating is that there was a comparison of sensitive and non-sensitive people in Asia and in the United States. And we know from other research that these individualistic cultures compared to the communal kinds of cultures actually see abstract pictures differently. Just a line in a box, they see differently. And um, for Asians, it's easy to judge the size of the box, but difficult to judge the size of the line. It's amazing that this would make a difference, because in a communal culture, you're constantly aware of the context, the social context. And um, Americans have a hard time figuring, judging relative shape, sizes of boxes, but don't have any problem paying attention to length of the line. So that study had already been done and the, and the results were there and it was clear that people were different in cultures. It's the more activation was when they were trying to do the thing that was harder for them given their culture. Well, we looked at the sensitive, uh, we, we had given the HSP measure to everybody in the study, and although there were just 20 people in the study, very clear that neither the Americans or the Asians, if they were highly sensitive, had any trouble with either task. It was like they were so good at perceiving things that, or processing what they were perceiving, that it didn't matter what their culture was. This is quite a striking difference. Perhaps it makes us more international in some way. <laughs>